We're here today to discuss online dispute resolution as it applies to marital dissolution. I'm Karen Monk. I'm Mikhail Shuffle. And I'm Ian Shuffle. And we'll begin with Ian. Today, courts are requiring parties seeking legal separation or dissolution of marriage to engage in some form of appropriate dispute resolution, such as mediation, in order to resolve most, if not all, of their disputes prior to submitting a separation agreement to the courts. Individuals who cannot afford traditional ADR, such as mediation, involving two attorneys and a mediator, could use online dispute resolution to write a reasonable separation agreement, especially where the parties do not have complicated issues, where the parties should not be in physical proximity to each other or geographically located or geographically separated, and where the parties both have internet access. Some countries have already shown success with ODR applications focused on marital disillusions, and this trend will more than likely continue as divorces continue to happen, legal costs continue to escalate, and more pro se parties attempt to divorce. When there are matters or issues that cannot be resolved by the parties to a divorce, mediation and other forms of ADR may offer a solution to the parties. ADR is a process that allows parties an opportunity to resolve their dispute without the need to resolve the matter in court. And mediation is only one type, whereby a neutral third party assists disputing parties to reach their own resolution. While many mediations are ordered later in the legal process, the timing for an order to mediate is not universally agreed upon. Mediation that is ordered too early can fail because either or both parties lack the information required to reach an educated and reasonable solution. Conversely, mediation that is ordered too late may run up against parties that have become entrenched and intransigent against one another, having spent the money that might have otherwise funded their compromise through ADR. While mediation has been successful in resolving matters between adverse parties, it is not the only process for achieving such results. More recently, the practice of online dispute resolution has gained more prominence with the courts, offering benefits for adverse parties that may provide the best course of action for resolving their issues. So, what are our other options? outside of ADR. We have online dispute resolution. And what on online dispute resolution is, is it's essentially appropriate dispute resolution using technology. It came about in the early 90s uh, with the advent of PayPal and uh, uh, eBay as they needed a uh, more efficient and cost-effective way, uh, way for their customers to resolve their disputes. So, <clears throat> They created this, these online dispute resolution applications within their uh, existing platforms, which made it very convenient for the uh, customers to resolve disputes uh, quickly and conveniently. So how does online dispute resolution work? Essentially, you have an application on the internet, and that application uh, can consist of online forms, templates, uh, data entry wizards, guides, uh, remote communication tools, and document uh, sharing uh, sites as well. And so by having all of this online, there's no in-person interaction required between the parties. By reading through the guidelines and everything posted on the application, uh, the users become educated about the process and they're empowered to resolve their dis uh, disputes uh, independently. What are some of the advantages of ODR that we've seen so far? Well, it's very cost effective, especially in instances where the parties are geographically separate from each other or where parties should not be interacting together. Um, and also it saves money because they can miss less work and, uh, and miss their responsibilities to family and so forth uh, because they can get online uh, when the time is convenient for them. It improves the resolution time. Uh, there's no office hours. They don't have to meet someone between the hours of 8 and 5. They could get on at midnight if that's what fits their schedule. Uh, they have immediate access to information and shared documentation between the parties. Uh, you don't have to worry about faxing or uh, email or anything like that. 
And there's more focus on problem solving uh, because if you take the parties and separate them uh, physically, uh, there tends to be fewer emotions involved, which helps to focus on the problems at hand. Uh, and finally, uh, the parties uh, experience increased autonomy and control over the, of, over the process uh, because they're educated uh, through the guides that are posted on these tools and they are resolving the disputes uh, independently. There are some disadvantages, of course, to online dispute resolution. Uh, probably the primary one being that it, it can hinder some effective communication because you have removed the body language uh, from the equation. You cannot see and you also cannot express what you're trying to convey using um, gestures and facial expressions. Uh, it does require reasonable access to quality internet, which uh, for some clients that may be difficult. Uh, it is more difficult to establish a rapport with the parties uh, and uh, become comfortable with each other if they're not actually talking to each other face to face. Uh, they also have to be able to read and navigate an online application, which can be difficult uh, for some uh, people, uh, for, for some parties in the population. And finally, there's normally no professional support or advice available to them online. Online dispute resolution is used for a wide variety of conflicts. However, today we are talking about marital dissolutions and specifically the mediation of those marital dissolutions. An online dispute resolution is already being used in this arena in two different countries. First, the Netherlands and second, Great Britain. Um, really, the online dispute resolution in these countries is used for individuals that are pro se and need affordable access to legal assistance. Um, these out online applications help individuals create separation agreements and allow them to stay out of the court process while still complying with the law. You don't have issues of pro se parties writing agreements that highly favor one party while disfavoring the other party in division of time or division of resources. Instead, you have an agreement that favors both parties and is in the best interest of both parties. Additionally, you have agreements that um, Additionally, you have agreements that comply with the law. The, both these online applications allow attorneys to look at the separation agreements before they're given to the parties and after they're produced. So both the separation agreements comply with the local law of the land. And so you don't have parties going into the court with a separation agreement to get a stamp of approval from, an, from a judge um, instead in then being sent away because it does not comply with the law. So first, let's go over the program in Netherlands called Reschwitzer 2.0. First, parties begin by registering for the program. Each party answers several multiple choice questions, and then the program, based on the, both individuals' questions, essentially gives you an agreement that matches the answers given by both parties. If the parties do not agree on the separation agreement provided, the website will actually give you a mediator or an arbitrator to come together to meet and arbitrate your separation agreement so it's fair to both parties and so it fits all of your needs. The parties do have to pay for that additional application in the Netherlands, however, it is a useful application. Once they successfully create a joint separation agreement, the service actually provides a legal review of the separation agreement as stated earlier, so an attorney looks at it before it's provided to the court. Unfortunately, the Netherlands Reschwitzer program was entirely funded by the government and was unable to keep up its funding because it was not requiring individuals to actually pay for the use of the program. Knowing this, Justice 42 in the Netherlands swept in and took over that same void that, would, that needed to be filled from Westwitzer um, breaking down. Justice 42 essentially does the same thing as Westwitzer. However, individuals do have to pay for the use of the program. However, the cost is significantly less than what it would be for both parties to hire attorneys and a mediator in order to get a similar separation agreement. 
Now, Great Britain has a very similar program called My Law BC. However, My Law BC is a much simpler application that simply guides parties through the separation agreement. They essentially go through the separation agreement document and look at it point by point, decide how they would like to answer, and then the program gives you a separation agreement. My Law BC also allows an attorney to review the separation agreement, so when you go to court, you can trust that it's going to be approved by the judge instead of the judge saying that it's not legal and spitting it right back to the parties to have to redo again. However, My Law BC does not have an independent option to hire a mediator or an arbitrator to do the same kind of process. Now, both of these applications have proven successful in their own countries by providing a faster and more affordable way and more convenient way for couples to get a legal separation or dissolution. This same program is being researched in countries like Michigan and even Colorado by our own University of Denver in order to have online dispute resolution for individuals here that, and pro, specifically pro se parties that need to save money, but also need a separation agreement that's going to be fair and reasonable for both parties. Now, um, as Karen stated earlier, there are some negatives to online dispute resolution. However, the two programs from the Netherlands and Great Britain really decrease um, on these negatives and try to make them into positives. First, Karen talked about that ODR can hinder effective communication. Now, while this might be true in some online dispute resolution circumstances, it's not true with the Netherlands and the Great Britain program because the parties don't actually have to directly communicate. They communicate with the program, and the program then gives them a separation agreement that meets both of their needs. And then the Netherlands provides a mediator if that communication is indeed being hindered by the online application. However, communication is actually strengthened because it's narrowly tailored and they ask very, very specific questions about topics that need to be addressed in the separation agreement instead of large emotional topics like what led to the divorce, especially in areas like Colorado where it's a no-fault divorce state and the judge is not going to take into consideration what the parties did to get to this point. Additionally, Karen talked about how it's more difficult to establish rapport with online dispute resolution. And while this may be true for in some instances, with the Netherlands and the Great Britain sites, rapport honestly doesn't matter because the website has the rapport. The website by the lawyers reviewing your separation agreements gives rapport to the website and so there isn't a third party that needs to swoop in and be there throughout the entire mediation process. Instead, the website does the legwork for you. And lastly, Karen talked about that online dispute resolution often does not have professional support or advice. However, like I've already stated, in the Great Britain and the Netherlands, both websites do include professional support that review your separation agreement after it's already been completed. And so these programs are addressing the needs that are in online dispute resolution in order to make it effective. talked about My Law BC, Great Britain's online form for online dispute resolution. We talked about it specifically in the area of separation agreements for dissolutions and legal separations. However, My Law BC for online dispute resolution is actually addressing several different categories. Separations, divorces, and family matters, but also abuse and family violence, missed mortgage payments, and then wills and personal planning. So clearly online dispute resolution can be used in a lot of areas. Today, obviously, we are talking about separation in divorce and family matters. Now, my law BC does claim that they can find a solution to your family law matters in 15 to 20 minutes. Now, me working for a family law firm, I'm a little skeptical of 15 to 20 minutes, but it might be efficient. So, on their website, they give you several options. First, you can make a separation agreement or a separation plan for you and your partner to work through family law matters. Now this would be a plan for essentially going forward for how you and your partner going through your divorce or legal separation are going to talk about it and going to find solutions to your current problems, whether it be the house, the bank accounts, the cars, or retirement plans. Second, you can also <coughs> get family orders. You figure out which court to use and then get help with court orders. 
So in Colorado, say, this could be used to tell you exactly which courthouse you need to go to. Currently, you can go to the courthouse website and actually get forms for all the separation and dissolution forms you need in order to separate or divorce your partner. This would be a place you could find it in one easy spot and also learn how to fill it out with live help with attorneys or paralegals online. And lastly, it gives you an option, <coughs> I've been served with a court document. So this essentially gives you a how to deal with being served with divorce or separation papers. Obviously, it's a little bit of a traumatic experience if you didn't know that your partner was looking to divorce or legally separate. And so this website from Great Britain just gives you an avenue in how to deal with that information and what your next steps are. Whether you're trying to reconcile with your partner or whether you want to hire an attorney. Or lastly, whether you can't afford an attorney. Both parties are pro se and you want to do online dispute resolution if you're in Great Britain through My Law VC. The website even clarifies that before you begin, if you are in an unhealthy relationship and one person has more power than the other person, then you can communicate with individuals in order to gain steps on how to deal with that abusive behavior from your partner. You and you, you want to keep you and your family safe if you are at risk. The website even clarifies, if you're worried about a power imbalance, it's a good idea to go through our abuse and family violence pathway first. So they give you a lot of options in how to practically approach the legal separation or divorce that you are entering into, whether you are doing it in agreement with your partner or whether your partner is doing it without your consent at all, or whether you're the individual that wants to be divorced or legally separated, and you have to figure out how to get divorced without paying a lot of money for attorney's fees because you simply don't have that money. And My Law VC today in Great Britain helps you to do that. So digging into the website even more, there are two options. There's a dialogue tool or there's a mediation tool. So the dialogue tool helps you to work together to make an agreement. So you select an option below, make a plan, review your situation, and work on your agreement. So it gives you kind of the same mega separation plan option that was on the previous page, but it also gives you an opportunity to create an account or um, be a returning user, meaning that you can go to your separation plan and then leave it and come back if it's too emotionally difficult, meaning that the website also takes into account your emotions and the fact that you can't just sit down and get it done in one instance when it's a very emotional process. You can also get help with your agreement from a professional. Um, this allows you to either talk with an attorney or paralegal about the agreement that you are drafting. So lastly, let's look at the mediation tool. So you can actually work with a free professional mediator on My Law VC if you need help. So again, you can create an account, return user. You can also see how the Family Resolution Center can help you. They help you actually make a parenting plan. So this goes beyond a separation agreement into the world of divorces and legal separations when children are involved. Instead of what we've been talking about previously, simply a separation agreement where there are no children involved and so a separation or a parenting plan is not required. However, this website goes above and beyond in order to help you create even a parenting plan. The website even clarifies how to incorporate your parenting plan into your separation agreement and then into your court order. What a lot of individuals don't understand about separation agreements and parenting plans before they begin the legal separation or dissolution process is that once they are accepted by the court, they are a court order and you can actually be found in contempt for violating the court order instead of it simply being a normal contract. And so this website helps clarify those issues by stating that they help import your parenting plan to an actual court order. And that simply clarifies the significance of your separation agreement or parenting plan. So as you can see, My Law BC is a very comprehensive website that helps a lot of individuals in areas much beyond separations and dissolutions. Instead, even family violence or late mortgage payments. 
This online dispute resolution could be instituted in America today and specifically Colorado in order to give individuals who can't afford an attorney a fair shot at creating a reasonable separation agreement with the other party involved without actually having to talk to them, but while also complying with the local law. Reasonable separation agreements for pro se parties are time consuming and court dockets are too full to participate fully in each and every one. Appropriate dispute resolution, such as mediation, has been encouraged, if not required, by most courts across the country to reduce the workload on the courts by having couples resolve their disputes outside of the courtroom. With the ever-increasing cost of legal assistance, parties may someday be able to take control of the legal process and benefit from online dispute resolution programs dedicated to legal separations and dissolutions, such as the ones in Great Britain and the Netherlands. As for the self-evaluation, uh, part of this presentation, um, we began by deciding how we wanted to divide the work. Um, that was an internal negotiation, uh, actually multiple internal negotiations, uh, about what our individual strengths and individual weaknesses are and how they would um, apply or hinder uh, each individual learning goals. Now those learning, ob learning objectives are first, attendees will acquire a basic understanding of family law dispute resolution that may arise from marital dissolutions. The second learning goal, attendees will learn about online dispute resolution and its advantages in general. And finally, attendees will learn about how online dispute resolution could be applied to marital dissolution mediation and improve the outcomes. Now once again, going back to our uh, internal negotiations, we ultimately decided, and as you saw in our presentation, that I would take the first learning objective, that Karen would take the second, and that Mikhail would take the last. Um, furthermore, um, as a result of those internal negotiations, we decided to jointly work on introductions, on the conclusions, and the citations. Yeah, so <clears throat> how we came together as a group and how well we worked, I was actually really impressed, uh, you know, the day we met, you know, because we were all three strangers, we didn't know each other uh, before we were grouped together, and we seemed to have uh, a very easy chemistry right away. So when we had to come up with the, the proposals of what we were going to do, um, you know, everyone threw forth some ideas, we tossed them around very quickly, because everyone <clears throat> has, I think, the same work ethic between the three of us which makes it very easy to work together. And uh, you know, we easily just zoned in, on, you know, zoned in on one option and started to build that out um, based on our different backgrounds and experiences, what would make sense, you know, what we could relate to, what was easy to speak to, <clears throat> and this is how we came up with this topic. And then throughout this process, we had to negotiate, you know, when would we meet, where would we meet, how long would we meet, all, you know, all those just, you know, administrivia type of things. Um, and since, you know, I'm a night student, I live far away, you know, we decided that we would <clears throat> take advantage of the Zoom application. So we would meet online primarily, uh, where we could share the documentation. We um, had a shared document so we could edit right there together on the fly, uh, which was really useful, uh, you know, because we can see what everybody's doing. Uh, you know, nobody was possessive of the work. Everyone was very open about <clears throat> editing each other's work. Very supportive, um, so I'm very pleased. These are great partners to have, so I think it was a really great experience. And as far as where we could improve, uh, based on the feedback we got from Professor Parks on our um, both our proposal and our full paper, we definitely could have um, put in a little more research. We had some sentences and... Um, some claims in our paper that weren't cited or backed up by research and said it was just kind of an assumption that we made um, about whether it be appropriate dispute resolution or whether it be about dissolutions or legal separations or online dispute resolution specifically. I think there were, um, I think around one in each of our sections that we could have backed up with more research. And additionally, just kind of negotiated research responsibilities. I think we all kind of researched our own areas and each of our learning objectives 
is because that's how we had divided it up. But I think if we had um, collaborated more on all of the research we had provided with each other, we would have been able we would have been able to back up each of the claims we all made. I think the research was mostly there, just wasn't applied in the most specific ways because we each had our own separate learning objectives that we worked on. However, overall, um, we did a, I think we did a great job. We had great chemistry as a group working together, and we enjoyed it and negotiated a lot. Yes. Thank you. So, in addition to the negotiations that we had between the three of us regarding Haywood work on, <coughs> excuse me, which learning objective for the paper, as well as how we would do the introduction, the conclusion, the citations, how we edited each other's work. We also participated in negotiations surrounding the video presentation. Now, one of the issues that came up with the video presentation was that we knew Mikhail would be going out of town closer to the due date. So we thought it was wise that she take on the uh, demonstration of the website MyLawBC, not only because she wouldn't be around closer to when the paper was due, uh, but also because she has a lot more experience in working in family law than Ian and myself. So she could speak very well to the benefits of what My Law BC has to offer from firsthand experience. And we also thought that it would be less disjointed if we had a single person doing the demo of My Law BC, uh, because if we had split it up where each of us took a turn explaining a part, it would be a little harder for the audience to follow what was trying to be conveyed um, in that lesson. So we thought that it would be more fluid for the audience. So then, based on the strengths of myself and Ian, uh, we took on the videography responsibilities, the slides, uh, all the creation of all the slides needed for the video, presentation, as well as all of the editing required. And not only because we would be around closer to the due date, but uh, we have more experience in technology uh, with the equipment and the software than Mikhail. So it was actually quite easy to come to uh, this decision on how we would divide up the work for the video presentation. And just like with the paper, the video presentation went very smoothly um, and very pleased with how uh, we all worked together. Uh, so uh, it was a very good experience. <laughs>